Hi there, this is Robin Andrew from Comp Academy, and this is the next video in our Snake Game tutorial for Python Turtle Graphics. So at the end of the last tutorial, we had this code here, which I'll share in the description in a paste bin for you. And if we run this code, just to see what it does. Okay, so we've got the basics. We can get a bit of food and our snake grows. Okay, but there's a few things like if we go off screen, nothing happens. And also self-collision. Uh, if I can get it back, I won't be able to do self collision until we've maybe got a slightly longer snake. <laughs> but if we now it's probably long enough, if we crash with ourselves, you see, did you see that? It just kind of turned around, it didn't, you didn't die, it was just supposed to do you crash with yourself in the snake game. So there's a few changes to make, okay, and we'll do those now. Um, but also, there's a few differences in the way that I want to actually structure the code. So if you've been following this, uh, this mini series, then you'll probably notice that I've done quite a lot of refactors as we go along. Now, this is actually quite common when you're writing code, depending on how much upfront planning you do, and to be honest with this, I didn't do much at all, um, you're gonna find yourself changing things as you go along. Okay, so let's, let's make a start. I decided to get rid of most of these constants because they were very general if I wanted to kind of have control over the game, but I decided for, to keep things simple, let's, let's lose a lot of that, and just have like one version, one size, one speed, okay? So this was when I wanted a bit more control. But let's lose some of that. So we're going to get rid of food size, we're going to get rid of snake cell size, we're going to get rid of square size because that's always 20 unless you modify it, that's the uh, dimensions of the inbuilt square shape for turtle. So, and we've got delay. So delay is really just the time between updating each frame in our main loop and we'll talk about that more later. So we're going to have a function called check head collision. I'm going to put that after check food collision. So def check head. And because it's colliding with itself, you could call it self collision or head collision. So I'm going to have self collision as my variable actually. And I'm going to start with false. And then I'm going to go through the snake and see whether that's being collided with by the head. So I'm going through the body, checking whether it's a collision with the head. So four segments in segments. So for each of those parts of the body, I'm going to do if the segment dot distance. Now this is an inbuilt turtle method, very, very useful uh, between two turtles. So if the segment dot distance from the head, that's how you do it, is let's say less than 20, because that's the width of the, each cell, uh, then we're going to do, uh, let me put my curl on there. Then we're going to do head dot go to zero zero, which is the center. And we're going to do head dot direction, and that's going to be set to stop equal stop, not plus stop. And we're also going to say self collision. Okay. Um, we're going to then say that it's true. Okay, so what have we done? We said we assume that there isn't a collision, and then we've gone through each cell in the body and given it a chance to say actually we have collided. At which point we set self collision to true. And then at the end of it, uh, at that level, we do if self collision, then new game. Okay, and we'll talk about new game in a minute. Then actually implemented it. Um, so. If self, this is the same as saying, if self collision um, equals equals true. Okay, but you don't generally do that. Once, you've, once you understand what's going on, then you can always substitute if self collision equals equals true for if self collision. It means the same thing. Okay? Um, and the opposite of that is if not self collision in Python. So now we've got this new game function. Okay, so new game, that's line 51 where I'm calling that. We haven't got that function yet. Now the reason I brought in this function from before is because when we do a self collision, uh, my previous version of this, it moved all these cells off to the side of the screen, which was great because you couldn't see them, you could carry on the game. But however, they remained in memory. Okay, so if you played the game for a long time, the whole thing would eventually slow down. So the reason I've implemented a new game is so we can actually reset the screen 
um, and that will clear all the turtles from memory so you don't get that kind of uh, leakage of memory with all those unused turtles that are being moved off the screen. Okay, so moving stuff off the screen is fine to do, um, depending on the context, you know, it's quite a good way of just getting something out of the way so you don't see it, but there are potential problems with that. Okay, so I'm not even going to show you that initial attempt. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, a lot of this original code came from an article, which I'll share a link to, and it kind of gave me a foundation for doing the snake game because I hadn't done it before. Um, but there was a lot of stuff wrong with it, so I'm kind of eking out some of the problems and kind of, you know, hopefully helping you to avoid some of those problems in the future. So that was one of them. If you just move stuff off the screen, then uh, you might slow down your program eventually if you if you do that a lot because the turtles still exist. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Coffee, good coffee. Right, so um, we're doing our new game function. So the new game function now, let's do this uh, here. And it's basically gonna have pretty much everything that we have outside here. Not quite everything, but mostly everything. So let's, uh, okay, this is refactoring here. We're gonna get all of that to start with and put it inside of our new game function and it's going to need to be indented. Now actually when we do clear screen, okay so the main reason I'm doing this is to be able to use screen.clear or clear screen which I'm going to do um, at this point. No hang on a minute. Because some of these you only need to do once. So, for instance, creating the screen, giving it a title, and giving it the dimensions, they only need to be done once. So, we put those separately. Okay. But the, the stuff that needs to be done every time once you've cleared the screen is the color and the tracer and all of the, the bindings. Yeah, okay, so every time you clear the screen, you lose the bindings. So, what I'm saying is here I'm going to do screen. Screen.clear, but that's going to reset everything apart from these, which are kind of that they they stay over from previously. So we'll put those outside of it because we don't need to do those every time. They can come down here. Okay. And I don't know how to undo tabs in idle. Normally it's uh, shift tab that doesn't work in idle. So hopefully that makes sense. The first time we do it, we give, you know, we create our screen, we give it a title, we give it some dimensions. They don't get changed by the by the clear method, but the other ones do, right? So we then have to, every time we call new game, we then have to, uh, you know, redefine the background color, turn off the animation again, and also rebind all of these events, because right? they got cleared as well. Um, we also need to create a new snake head. So basically we're like getting, getting rid of everything each time the, the snake crashes of itself um, or you hit the, the border, which we'll do later, okay? And what will we do next? So, uh, so we're clearing our screen, we're rebinding our events, we're doing the snake head, we also need to do the snake food that's inside that function. Okay, what next? Anything else? Um, Yes, our segments, all of that needs to go in there as well. Okay. So this is basically resetting pretty much everything apart from that initial screen information. Okay, that's good. Now play, no, I'm going to rename this, I'm going to call it Game Loop. Okay, because it's just slightly more descriptive. So if you haven't done much game development, then there's this whole thing about the game loop and it's basically just in the background, just going round and round and round. Um, and it's, it's really good to keep it quite clean, okay? So you can have, you see what I've done now inside my game loop, I've got moving the snake, checking for collisions, updating, and then calling myself just so the loop continues. Okay, so we defined check head collision on line 42, but we haven't yet put it into our game loop, okay? So what we need to do is either before or after the food collision, doesn't really matter, um, we can then call check head collision to see whether there's a self collision with the snake going on. So let's do that here on line 105. So check head collision. Okay. So hopefully you can see the game loop is starting to make sense just in terms of some simple function calls and you know the kind of main steps in making the game work. So let's try that. Now. 
obviously you can't really check a self collision until you've got a slightly longer snake, so you have to play for a bit. Maybe one more. Okay, so now let's see if we can collide with ourselves. Yes, we can. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.